Hi, I'm Jack and I'm here with Dr. Furman and Dr. Furman just said something that I have never heard of. Please. You never heard of that? No. That a vitamin D test is so important? Never. Well, look, I mean, you know, every person needs a different amount of supplements. Some people may need um, a thousand milligrams a day of sub vitamin D supplement. Oh, no, no, like, I heard vitamin D was important. No, you Sorry, said, said it was more important than a cholesterol more test. Than a cholesterol yeah, but, but that's right. I'm saying that some people may need a lower dose, and that may be enough for them, and other people, even taking a high dose, may not be enough for them. Our ability to absorb and utilize vitamin D is so varied from person to person. So I'm saying that if vitamin D is so powerful, probably the most important nutritional discovery in the last 50 years in nutritional science is the fact that vitamin D has such powerful effect to protect against cancer, including breast cancer, that women who were given vitamin D supplements four years later had a 30% um, lower risk of breast cancer. We're talking about four years later when the, when the natural trajectory of developing a cancer cell to actually becoming large enough to be viewed by the human eye to be detectable on a mammogram is a 15-year um, expense. We're talking about reversing breast cancer in three or four years. So we're saying that um, vitamin D has a very powerful effect to prevent cancers from coming out into the body and becoming cancer and actually promote reversal of cancer. What is that test called? The, and, and of course, the blood test, so, so the amount of vitamin D you take has to be individualized so to, to you have this maximum benefits. And the test is called the vitamin D 25 hydroxy. And I can take, I can go up to my physician and say this is the test that I want. Of course. Yeah. And what if he says no? What if he says, yeah, because I, I, I've asked for tests that, that they've said you don't need that. Well, explain to him that you're surprised that he doesn't not read the research that shows that vitamin D is so powerfully protective against both heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancer and bone disease. And that, because vitamin D affects all systems of the body, not just your bones. And that um, making sure the amount of vitamin D you're supplementing with and making sure your levels are in the, in the ideal range is, is one of the most important health things you could do. It's much more important than monitoring your cholesterol level, your glucose level, or anything else a blood test could test for. This is the most important thing a person should know. They Everybody should know their, their vitamin D level. Do most physicians know that range that you were just speaking no, about? No, they don't read nutritional research. So, they don't read research. So that range you just mentioned a little bit before was 25, I don't know 35 what to 55 on the blood test. Okay. And so now 80% of Americans are to fit below 35. We're saying here that wow. if, if all of America would fix their vitamin D levels, and of course, everybody you see, and every patient I see, doesn't check their vitamin D levels, and they're all deficient. And you see, and most of the doctors say nothing about it. They walk in, they test their cholesterol levels, they put them on cholesterol lowering drugs, they put them on blood pressure medications from one blood pressure reading of being high in a doctor's office, of being a little nervous of being high, they throw them right on a drug in the first five minutes. But they never mention anything about their, you know, their diet or whether they should be taking vitamin D or whether they should check their vitamin D level. And it's probably the most powerful intervention you could do to revolutionize the health of Americans we, now, without, without any major. Um, major effort here. Now I've read on a popular health site, uh, I think it was Mercola, he says that with 30 minutes of sun exposure a week, you get, your vi you know, you get adequate vitamin D. Is that congruent with the research? No, that's, it's not that. See, there's some research that might suggest that a certain amount of time might be beneficial, but what it really shows is that the amount of sun exposure is so incredibly variable from one person to another that you can't guarantee that 30 minutes from one person would be all that they need. There was even a study done on Hawaiian surfers, mm -hmm. where they were, out in the, they were outside three to four hours a day, and, and about half of them didn't even have adequate vitamin D levels. Whoa. It was all based on, and these were Caucasians, by the way. Right. You know, the darker your skin, the less likely you need more sunshine to get the same amount of vitamin D. We're concerned here because with the loss of the ozone layer, that it's possible that the, we, we're increasing the risk of skin wrinkling and skin cancers. So in order to get vitamin D adequacy by the sun, you're also increasing the risk of skin cancer and, and wrinkling. So certainly you should protect your face and your vulnerable areas and, and use sun carefully. And don't assume that, and most of us work indoors anyway most of the time. Right. But we can't assume that the sunshine we're getting um, is, you know, is going to be adequate for us. You still need a blood test to check that. Now, are there any foods that are naturally rich in D, or is it one, this is, this is the... There are some foods that have some vitamin D in them, like, um, like the livers of certain fishes, mm -hmm. and mush some, some mushrooms. But most of us, it's very hard to achieve vitamin D adequacy through food. It's most, vitamin D is considered the sunshine vitamin, called the sunshine vitamin. Mm -hmm. So in our primitive state, it would more be that we would out in the sun more. And of course, we'd be living outdoors without clothes, so much clothing on. And we have indoor jobs now. We sit on our rear ends the whole day. So we have to exercise now because we don't have act we don't, well, our life, our work is no longer a physical activity. So we have to add exercise to our diet and sports and things to keep physically active. And what's the dosage each day? 
vitamin, of D. The vitamin D. Yeah. Well, most people need about 1,500 to 2,500 a day. Wow. So, I'm, I'm, so in my supplements, for example, we give people about 2,000 IU's of vitamin D. And then if they're low, they can add a little bit. And if they're high, they can decrease a little bit. But most people, we want them to take about 2,000 IU's of vitamin D per day. And of course, you know, the average multi contains 400 IU. And on that 400 IU, the average multi that was based on old studies, they don't update themselves. Mm -hmm. um, almost all people are deficient on those dosages. Wow. I have to ask you, could it even, um, does vitamin D have any, uh, any effect on depression? Because I hear so yes. many people are depressed. I, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't, I've never heard. Well, that's right. We have a protocol for people who are depressed. And it's, it includes vitamin D and fish oil and a high nutrient diet and morning sunshine. We're using the therapeutic lights. And we're saying that the combination of the nutritional intervention, the therapeutic light, exercise, and vitamin D, and the omega-3 fatty acids works more effective than drugs do to get people out of depression.